In our previous video, we looked to see how M control fit into the digital smart home. We looked at how adapters allow us to talk to smart devices. We looked at how smart devices are able to talk back to M control through the network that we've established. So now we're almost ready to install M control. So before we do that, we have some fundamental questions. You know, what kind of OS do we need? What do we install M control on? What platform? What can we use as a user interface to talk with M control and control devices? Are there any other software components that we need to install or take take into consideration? And then we know that M control has lots of features. What are the various M control modules that uh, we will need? Okay, so let's take a look. First of all, when we're considering M control, you need to consider what you're going to be using, uh, what OS you're going to use M control with. Well, this very simple answer is almost any current generation or fairly new generation of Windows platforms. And that goes from Windows Vista to Windows 7, uh, the server platforms, and of course the new Windows 8. So if you have one of these operating systems, you're probably ready to have M control installed upon it. So what can we use as a platform? Well, practically anything. So many of our users have an old uh, desktop system uh, and uh, will use M control on there. Um, or you may have a laptop that you want to use and you want to install M control on there. Um, many people who want to make sure that we have uh, M control running on a 24-7 basis use a diskless or fanless uh, uh, a system uh, like an EEE box uh, made by ASUS. Many of our other users consider using server platforms like the Windows Home Server platforms. These systems are running in the background and are ideal for running M control. And of course we have our own platform called the M Server platform. Uh, M, uh, the new version of the M station should be out soon but uh, just watch our website for the release of that. But the vast majority of our uh, customers have a lot of options on uh, their own options available and they will use their own platforms that they have in their homes. Okay, so we've answered the question of what OS do we need, what platforms do we need, and let's, so let's ask another question is what can we use as user interfaces? Well here again the answer is practically anything. You can use Basically, a PC with any of these browsers, Firefox, IE, Safari, or Chrome. So now, um, if you're running an, uh, you want to use your Apple Mac as an interface to M control, as long as it's talking to your platform, it works. It, you just use Safari on your iMac, talk to your server, which is running on a, a particular Windows platform, and you're good to go. For mobile, again, almost any uh, uh, browser will do, browser-based uh, mobile will do. So you can, if you want to run mobile on your Android system that's running uh, Chrome, or if you're running uh, Safari on your uh, iPhone, or if you're running a Windows IE uh, platform on your Windows phone, uh, you're good to go. Uh, any of these platforms will support the mobile version of uh, the UI. And of course, we also have a native iOS uh, user interface for iPhones, iPods, and iPads. So all of these can be used as your user interface, your kind of window into controlling M control. Of course, the, you can always use your desktop to, you know, uh, the, if you've got M control uh, installed on here, you can use the same desktop as a user interface. But we find that uh, many of our customers will be running the actual M control server on one of these platforms, but will be uh, talking and controlling M control through a different user interface. So those are kind of your options. Before we uh, install M control, we need to install a few software components, and prime among this is IIS7. Uh, so that stands for Internet Information Services. Uh, and this is basically Microsoft's web server. 
And so one thing that maybe isn't clear is mControl is basically a web application. It runs on your Windows platform, but it's really acting just the same as maybe a Google or uh, a Wikipedia. It's a web application, so it's serving up web pages to you or connect, allowing you to connect through a web-like interface. Uh, and so we need to have a server, and this is uh, this we use IIS as our main server. So this is a, a component of Windows. So, but uh, you may have to, and is usually available in your server platform or uh, other platforms. But you may have to activate this as part of your Windows. So you'd have to go into your control panel. Windows uh, 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 additional Windows components and install IIS, but it's uh, usually about a five-minute procedure. Another uh, couple of components that we can talk about is the Microsoft.NET. Basically, this is the plumbing. These are the kind of like uh, guts of uh, some of the functions that we are able to do, uh, and we take advantage of the Microsoft.NET kind of infrastructure to build our application and so it's part a native part of our uh, uh, mControl uh, product. One of the other components we use is a technology called Microsoft Silverlight and this allows us to design nice looking pages for your UIs but uh, most of these are installed beforehand if you buy a, uh, a computer from a store or one of your platforms from a store these will come pre-installed or if if they're not installed you'll get a, a notification to install them automatically okay so we've covered the basics we've covered our OS we've covered our platforms and we've covered our user interfaces and we've covered our sort of like extraneous our ancillary uh, software components we're ready to install mControl so we've installed mControl but it's a huge thing. So let's just talk about some of the components within mControl. The first component that we need to talk talk about is the mControl base system. Again, this is sort of like the engine of mControl. It provides the user uh, uh, the smarts to generate the user interfaces. It provides the smarts to uh, allow you to do control, uh, talk to your drivers. It also has the ability to do Right, uh, control your macros and uh, so that's an important part of automation. Some of the key sort of drivers that are uh, enabled by the base system include the Instian driver, the MB driver which is uh, mControl's version of Zigbee, and the Z-Wave driver, X10 drivers, uh, and there are two other special kinds of drivers that we can talk about. One is the generic driver. The generic driver allows you to write uh, your own sort of drivers and uh, especially this is useful for things like audiovisual equipment or you know very simple uh, things that you might want to talk to so it's a very very powerful tool and we'll talk be talking about it in uh, future videos and then we've also mentioned uh, uh, developer and by this we mean third-party drivers we have several uh, partners that we work with that have written their own driver and for example, uh, uh, one of our partners uh, has written a KNX driver, and so this works with the base systems. All third-party drivers work with the base system. So uh, this is essentially the uh, base of mControl. Without it, uh, you require the base system to run any other part of mControl, and uh, uh, this is sort of like the foundation. So now let's say that you want to try a few other things let's talk about some of the other optional modules uh, you need the base system but everything else in mControl is optional so let's, we're going to talk about some of the optional modules uh, one of the most popular optional modules is the security and surveillance module essentially exactly as the name implies it allows you to do two things it allows you to connect to security systems and things like uh, the DSC or the Ademcos or uh, um, the, there's there's a few other uh, security systems that connect can, can you can connect to. Of course, also the uh, probably uh, key in this is our surveillance module, and that's our ability to connect to IP cameras. And uh, with 3.0 M Control 3.1, we have ha expanded this capability. Uh, immensely we support over 20 manufacturers of IP cameras and literally hundreds of cameras and you can add them in record 
uh, and uh, view multiple cameras at a time. Very, very powerful in uh, so you can set up a whole IP camera infrastructure in your home and do some monitoring in your home. Uh, it, it, it's a, a very, very powerful feature, and these two can work together. Uh, so the security and surveillance can obviously work with your base system. So if you want to write macros or have a, a you know control lighting, uh, this is uh, these kind of all these modules work together. So let's talk about another optional module uh, called the energy management mo module. So basically, the energy management module is for uh, users that are interested in monitoring and in controlling the energy usage in their home. So the two, uh, there's there's various drivers that are enabled by the energy management module, but uh, key among these are two types of modules. One is HVAC modules, which are essentially thermostats. So if you want to control a thermostat, you're likely going to want a energy management module. There's a little bit of an exception here because if you're you have a Z-Wave thermostat or an Instian thermostat, they you don't need a, an energy management model. These are covered under the base system. But if you have another type of uh, thermostat, you'll need the energy man management module. Another type of thing that's covered, a uh, set of drivers is covered, is basically energy monitoring devices. Now we sell uh, several energy monitoring devices, and these are very useful uh, in seeing how your home is using energy. So if you wanted to figure out what is the total energy use in my house, you might uh, consider the energy management module, enable the, for example, TED driver, which is the energy detective, That's the, and the acronym is TED, and it man, uh, monitors the, your overall energy use in your home. And so there's other drivers that are available, but this is very useful for managing how your energy is used in the home. And again, these can talk with the other modules that are available in or installed in M-Control. Another popular module is the media control module. Now this is a useful if you're trying to do two things, the two types of devices here. Uh, for example, we have a special uh, Device um, uh, driver here called a, a Windows Media uh, Media Center controller that allows you to control some of the Windows Media Center functionality in uh, in in your platform. So if you wanted to control the Media Center uh, that's connected up to your TV, that's it's something that you would be considering the Media Control uh, module. Another key component in the Media Control module is are things like IR control. Now this is very important if you've got a, a bank of uh, AV devices that can only be controlled by infrared or, or IR and uh, there's various devices that we support like the global cache uh, and, uh, and other uh, devices of that type that allow you to control devices using uh, IR. So that's what the media control module will do. Uh, if you are a professional installer or are working with, let's say, high-end homes, you're likely wanna, going to want to consider some of the drivers that are available in our professional module. Uh, and uh, I've listed a couple of the most popular modules, like uh, Universal Devices. They offer uh, some um, very good, comprehensive support of Instian networks. Similarly, there's a thing called the Mi Casa Verde Vera products, which provide comprehensive support of Z-Wave um, uh, networks. So if you want to expand the support or do more comprehensive support, you may want to consider these professional modules. The Instian and Z-Wave module are great for controlling switches uh, and basic functionality in your home, but if you want to step it up a bit and you've got over you know, 25 devices, you probably want to consider uh, these kind of modules and connect them in through M-Control. There are professional lighting uh, systems like Lutron, and we have support for that uh, as a driver that's available in the professional module. We also have uh, support for s things like specialty devices like Somfy uh, blind controllers. Now this is for window coverings. Let's say that you might have a uh, office that you're automating 
and you want to be able to control how the windows are uh, window mo uh, motors uh, that control the blinds uh, uh, for uh, for your window coverings and so this is a, a the Somfy driver might be something uh, that you might want to consider there's more uh, there's more than just the four that I've listed here uh, and uh, for example N Ocean and Tecmar are also included in the professional module check the, our feature summary document for more information on the professional module and finally uh, there is a, uh, a data logging module um, now why would you need a data logging module um, now if you're a customer that's uh, uh, interested in monitoring and getting data uh, historical data so you can do analysis uh, for example let's say that you're doing energy management and you're monitoring how your house is uh, uh, working this can this data can be collected into a set of files which then can be imported into Excel or other databases or other applications and you can do extensive analysis of how your house is operating so these are the various modules and we'll likely be in, in introducing future modules as well so uh, I think that the uh, you know like uh, these the point to make is that these are the components of M control so M control uh, may look like a, a you know monolithic package but it's actually made up of several uh, modules okay so uh, a lot to digest here but uh, let's just uh, summarize some of the things that uh, we've discussed um, basics are we need to have a fairly recent in the last decade uh, a version of Windows and uh, uh, there are a lot of options for you uh, to choose from including the most recent options uh, the uh, Windows uh, Server or Windows 8 platform family you can you choose any particular hardware that uh, you might have laying around or suits your needs we particularly like devices like the Windows Home Server or fanless devices or dedicated devices because M controllers could be running 24 7 and you want to have a nice uh, sort of uh, steady state platform that you know you can rely on that will be allow M control to do all the automation it needs in the background you you have a a large choice of devices that you can use as your user interface whether it be your laptop your desktop your mobile phone your iPads and we're going to be interested introducing more and more uh, user interface options in the future you will have to install a few components but these are very simple to install and may already be installed in your system uh, when you have it and then we talked about the various uh, module options that are available but uh, the base system is a requirement and so this is how M control is uh, uh, put together within a system so uh, this I hope this answers a lot of a qu uh, the questions uh, uh, that you may have had about how M control fits into your home ecosystem uh, if you have any questions leave them in the comments and we'll try to answer them and we'll look in now into installing M control and activating M control so we can get started in more uh, real-world applications Thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you soon.